Jesse Anna Seville here from the Kidney RD. Um, if you don't know me, the website's kidneyrd.com. We're a group of registered dietitians, renal nutrition experts, and we like to take a root cause to looking at what we can do to help preserve kidney function. Um, and every week I come on here, I do three or four lives just to share three or four videos, three or four lives to share about some ideas of what you can do to preserve your kidney function. There is so much that you can do and there absolutely is hope. If you've been diagnosed with kidney disease, you don't have to feel like you're on a slippery slope to dialysis. There's a lot you can do and the earlier you get started, the better because you will preserve your function. Totally, totally, 100% true. We see it all the time. So today we want to talk about metabolic acidosis. Now, this is a really, really critical thing. And I think it's something that is overlooked. It's not focused on with the labs. It's definitely not seen in all of the places you've been going on the internet <laughs> and thinking about. Um, that's really, really important. More important than probably phosphorus, maybe more important than potassium. Uh, it's so, so important. So metabolic acidosis. First off, you might be thinking, what in the world is met what in the world is metabolic acidosis? Metabolic acidosis is when the balance of acids and bases in your blood gets out of balance. This is huge, right? Our bodies are are such a finite system and it uh, you know our organs help titrate, you know, the pH of our blood to a certain level and our gut and you know all the sorts of things. pH is a big deal. Your kidneys are a major part of that titration. And if you have too acidic of urine, it's really going to cause some further decline in the progression of your kidney disease. Conversely, when your urine is more alkaline, they're seeing that people are preserving their kidney function longer. Um, so there's tons of chemical reactions, lots of processes in your body that are dependent on this pH of your urine and that's why it's really important. So why does it matter if you have chronic kidney disease? Again, the kidneys are responsible for getting rid of acid. Um, if they're not working well, then you can have this buildup and that's going to cause an overall decline and more inflammation. So it's a really, really important piece. It's one of the things that we do at the Kidney RD with all of our patients is we want to look at um, a alkaline diet and getting the diet very alkaline so that we can support, you know, less removal of acid. So how do you know if you have metabolic acidosis? What are you going to look at? Look on your blood work. It should be on everybody's blood work. It is a standard lab and it is the CO2 level. It can also be called carbon dioxide. It's usually up there with your GFR, sodium, like all those kind of labs on the first page. It's where you see the CO2 level. The reference range, we will talk about this week more, but the reference range on your labs, probably 20 to 30. You actually want it closer to 25. So if it says normal, you're like looking at it, like, yeah, hey, this is great, it's normal, but you're like 20, 21, 22, 23, you actually are a little bit acidotic. And there's some things you can do to help bring that number up. And it's really, really a very important part of preserving your kidney function. Um, so what do you do? An alkaline diet is very, very powerful. An alkaline diet is a diet that is has a lot of fruits and vegetables in it. That is one reason among many that a plant-based diet can be very, very powerful. Um, we really, really focus on getting a lot of fruits and vegetables in the diet. We have our patients log in chronometer and then we're checking for a number that's called the potential renal acid load. And it helps us kind of target which things are more acidic, which ones are more alkaline, and how can we really make sure that we have a diet that is alkaline as possible. Um, sometimes what we see is that people hear all this buzz about plant-based diet, go vegan if you have CKD, and you know, in their quest to preserve their kidney function, which all of us, you know, that's a noble quest, and of course that's what you're going to want to do, be proactive. But sometimes what we see is that people will start this plant-based approach and they won't actually include it so many fruits and vegetables it ends up being kind of this grain and lentil or grain and being kind of this starchy real starchy diet that is not an alkaline diet 
Um, you really want to be able to implement your fruits and vegetables first and making them that the first thing that you think about when you're planning out your meals. Where am I going to have a vegetable? Where am I going to have a fruit with this meal? Is such a powerful, powerful principle. Um, if we don't see that CO2 level go up as we include more fruits and vegetables in the diet, then we will talk with our patient's doctor about adding in some sodium bicarbonate, which also can be helpful. The research, and I'll tell you more about this later on this week, but it's interesting when they do uh, kind of a parallel study and they have people that take sodium bicarbonate, people that eat high fruits and vegetables, is that they will see that these people do almost exactly the same. And so fruits and vegetables really can be pretty much just as powerful if you eat them and consume them as a um, as a tablet or pill. And we think that that's definitely, definitely true. Okay, so as a recap, what is metabolic acidosis? Basically, it's when the, the balance of the acid and bases in your blood is off. Why does it matter if you have CKD? Because it can be a marker of progression. You know, if you're able to be more alkaline, you're probably not going to progress as fast. How do you know if you have metabolic acidosis? Look at your labs, look for the CO2 level or the carbon dioxide level, it's the same thing. And how can you reduce it? A diet that is very high, very heavy in fruits and vegetables and alkaline foods is very helpful for this. Of course, everyone has different restrictions, different fruits and vegetables they may be able to include. Some people need to do high potassium, some people need to do low potassium. It is not the same across the board. Um, doing a quick pause, sorry. <laughs> I have limits on social media on my phone and I record this in two places. So sometimes my phone will pause because I'm at the limit for the day. Um, that's it. I think that's everything that we're sharing tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm gonna to talk about a few myths, the baking soda myth, the CO2, what's normal myth. And so I hope that you will join us tomorrow for those. The website's kidneyrd.com. We did publish an article a few weeks ago with uh, by Carby about metabolic acidosis that may give you some more details that you can look into. And other thing to tell you, we'll be hosting our free live class in a couple weeks where we go through these different opportunities, you know, metabolic acidosis, how we target it. And that would be a great thing. We love when people join that class, um, go through opportunities to preserve kidney function and talk about our services and the amazing dietitians that we have at the Kidney RD. They are absolutely exceptional. Anyways, that's it for now, for now and see you again soon. Bye-bye.